Hi, Amy with Fashion Tappings here, and I'm going to do another refashioning. And this is a, a very simple idea, but I thrifted this sweater vest. It's a Ralph Lauren little sweater vest, and I loved it because of the colors. Um, it's, you know, that bright green, and then it's got the pink, to the pink little logo on there, Ralph Lauren logo, and it's a turtleneck. Well, so I bought it. I thought that I would wear it. Um, but every time I put it on, it's just, one, you have a turtleneck. So the only shirts, you know, other than put a t-shirt underneath it, which was way too casual. The only sh I had the shirt that's also the pink and the green matches perf matches perfectly, except for the fact, I mean, look at, they're meant to be together. This brand is actually Old Navy. This is an old, old Navy shirt I've had for a long time. It's even got the green in the collar. So it's a perfect match. But the problem is, is one, it's a turtleneck. And two, um, since I've gained weight, this is... This is a large and it fits just right. But when I try to layer the two, it's like, <laughs> this is what I can describe it. I felt like Santa Claus. I felt like I had newspaper packing inside of my sweater vest because this was too much bulk underneath this. Now I have done a similar idea to this where I um, took a shirt and actually took the collar and took the bottom of the shirt and sewed it underneath the sweater so that I could have that layered look without actually actually layering. Well, that's what I'm going to do to this one as well. This is going to be a little different. This time, since it's sleeveless, I want sleeves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the sleeves from the shirt and the bottom of the shirt. I'm going to add sleeves to the sweater. And then the bottom of the shirt, I'm going to attach to the bottom of the sweater so it looks like I have my shirt hanging out. I didn't tuck in my the shirt underneath but I'm not gonna have all that bulky fabric. This is a soft sweater too, so it'll be comfortable, you know, without having to wear a shirt underneath. It's not scratchy at all. And, but I can have that layered look without having all that extra padding, which I don't need in the midsection. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We take this off of my mannequin and let's go ahead and put this stuff on. Okay, so I have it on. And as you can see, I mean, my mannequin does not have a muffin top. My, my mannequin has nice, smooth hourglass figure which I do not. <laughs> and so right here, it doesn't look so bad, but when, you know, that's a lot of fabric under here. So I'm gonna get rid of all that. First thing I need to do, the only thing I'm keeping of this shirt, at least for this project, whatever I don't use, I actually am gonna save for another project. But um, all I'm gonna be using, like I said, is the two sleeves and the bottom. And look what I just noticed. Look at the little flower. I have an embroidered flower at the bottom of that. I just think that's gonna be a cute detail to keep with this. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is match up the shoulder seams of the sweater to the shoulder seams of the shirt. So I'm gonna go and pin them together so they don't move around. Okay, I went ahead and put it, I just put a pin right there. See how it's a nice smooth shoulder seam here and I'm attaching it directly to the shoulder seam here so that it'll look like I'm actually wearing it and I won't have like a shoulder seam back too far or too forwards. Everything's gonna look nice and, nice and neat. So I matched up my shoulder seam. Now you need to match up your side seams. And this is just for this is just for cutting purposes. So put a pin there. So I'll hold that in place. Do the same for both sides. Okay, now that I got the shoulder seams matched up and pinned so they don't move. My side seams pinned uh, and matched up so they don't move. Now I'm going to decide how much I want hanging out of the bottom of my sweater. I moved down a little bit. Now, I know that when I normally wear this, one, my dress form is smaller than I am, <laughs> but um, when I wear this and I leave this untucked, this isn't really enough fabric. I like it longer. I want it to cover if, I want, if I'm wearing leggings or whatever. So I'm actually going to have, because it's going to be coming, I'm just eyeballing it from, because I know I'm going to be sewing it to this, this little seam here. So I'm trying to picture how much I want to hang out below. And I think, I think I'm going to want about that much. I can always shorten it if I want to. You can always go shorter, but you can never go longer. So once you've cut, it's cut. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this.
just to give me an idea. I might want it a little bit longer in the back. Okay, and then pin it in the back. Okay, there's no wrong answer this, to this either because um, when you're wearing multiple layers, you know, when you stand up and you sit down, I mean, not always is your shirt going to be perfect. So, I mean, this is nice. If you make a mistake, it's very forgiving. So, I'm just going to pin it all the way around. This is a guide. Okay, there we go. This is a guide. Also, also making sure that side seams continue on matching. Okay, and then match up my side seam here. Okay, now I can make some adjustments here. Side seam there. Like I said, this is just a guide. Okay, now that I've got it pinned everywhere, everywhere where I think it's going to be attached to the sweater, I can take the sweater off and turn it inside out so that I can cut my fabric. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now that I have it inside out, I'm going to go ahead and cut the sleeves off because I have it pinned so I can see where where the edge of my sweater is, I can feel the pins. So I'm gonna go, because I don't wanna leave this a, a cut raw edge inside the sweater, so I'm gonna be cutting the sleeve all the way around the armpit and back around, but then I'm leaving enough, because I'm just gonna do a simple single rolled hem or I can do a double rolled hem uh, before I'm gonna be sewing it to the sweater. So I'm gonna be cutting the sleeve off. My unfinished edge, I'm going to do a double rolled hem, just so I don't have a raw edge that's gonna fray inside of my sweater. Or I could just do a zigzag stitch along the edge to keep it from fraying. It's up to you. But I'm going to cut enough so I can do a double rolled hem or single rolled hem to have a nice finished edge, edge inside of my sweater. So I can see where my pins are. And i got to make sure that I'm not cutting my sweater. So I'm going to make one cut first. Okay. Once I've made a cut, I can fit my scissors in there. And I can just cut all the way around. And your cutting doesn't have to be all that neat um, because like, you're not going to see it. It's going to be inside the sweater. So, as you see, my one arm is off. And I'll do the same thing to the other arm. Okay, and the other arm's done. And now for the bottom. I have my pins. I can see them through my, because I marked them, remember, I pinned on the other side of my sweater. So now I can see my, thin, my pins through the back. So once again, I want a finished edge, so it looks nice and neat on the inside. Um, so I'm going to, from where my pin is, I'm going to cut up about an inch. Take a little snip. And cut all the way around the, the shirt without cutting the sweater. Voila. I can take this off. Now if you're using a fabric that's not going to fray and you don't want, care about leaving the unfinished edges, now since your sweater's already inside out, your shirt is ready to go, it is inside out as well. That's just my spare button. Um, see, there's the good side. So you could just go ahead and start sewing, sewing this right to a seam line, the top of your ribbing of your sweater, you can just sew it straight or zigzag stitch, straight line, whatever you want. You can sew it right along the edge of that sweater. 
Now normally if I'm working with a knit, I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. As long as your thread matches, it won't be that noticeable. So you can just sew all the way around the bottom of your sweater and all the way around your armhole, attaching your sleeves and the bottom of your shirt to your sweater. But I want to have a finished edge. So I'm going to remove this, take my pins out. What I like about this project is, I know I've done something similar to it before, but what I like about it is, you know, if you have a little bit more to you in the midsection, you know, muffin top or just carrying more weight around the midsection, and you kind of avoid to do the layer, avoid doing the layered look, or um, maybe your sweater is just a little snug this year, but you want to be able to wear it, but you, you know, you, it needs to be a layered look to be able to wear that sweater. This is an alternative. Don't throw that sweater away. This has been sitting in my closet since the day I thrifted it because I love the color, but I just kept on thinking, I'm going to lose the weight. I'm going to lose the weight. I'm going to be able to get back into it, and um, it just, it's not happening. So I'm doing something about it. Not losing the weight, but I'm doing something about it. <laughs> so I, I'm going to make it so I can wear it. So let me go ahead. And I'm going to take this to the sewing machine, and you've all seen me do this a million times. I'm just going to take my, my, my cut edge which this shirt will fray. I'm just going to do a single a single hem and do a zigzag stitch all the way around. Something really basic. Like I said, this is going to be on the inside of the sweater, but I don't want it to ravel apart and I don't want it to look, you know, like am I cutting? I don't want it to look that sloppy. So I'm just going to fold it once or you can fold it twice, but I'll fold it once and I'm going to do a zigzag stitch all the way around just to keep from fraying. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and I don't know if you can see this or not. See the zigzag stitch right along this top? You can see a faintly a little zigzag stitch. And the back. I just folded it once and did the zigzag stitch. And that is just to keep that is just to keep my fabric from fraying. Now the next thing is to start attaching it to the sweater. Now I did one arm already, just so you can see what I'm doing. Let's see? And the sweater still has a lip. So it does look like it's a layered look. Okay, and so most of the time, I mean, if you've been sewing patterns, um, usually you have your your garment, and then you have like sides together. So inside, this is inside right, this is inside out. You would normally slide it in here. You would normally slide it inside, and then you know, pin around the opening, and then sew around, and then pull. You know, then grab your sleeve and you'd pull it inside right and you'd have a finished seam. Well the thing is is I want I don't want it to look like a finished seam. I want it to look layered. See underneath nice and smooth and I want to be able to watch my sewing lines. I'm going to sew from the outside because I don't want my sewing lines to be visible and as you can see you cannot see where I stitched. You see any stitch lines? I actually stitched right along here and so I want to be able to watch my sewing lines so I'm going to do the pinning as if I am wearing it. Now make sure that you, you know, you try on your sleeve so that you're putting your right sleeve because you know the buttons are on the outside of your arm. So double check and make sure you're sewing the right sleeve to the right side of your sweater because you don't want to have <laughs> left arm in the right hole and the right arm in the left hole. You know what I mean? So I have my, my underarm side seam right here. So I know where that's at, it's right here, and I know where my shoulder seam is. It is right there. So those are the first two things I'm going to want to match up. So I'm going to slide this in here. I'm just going to slide this inside. Turn my arm through the neck hole so I can make sure that I'm holding it. And I'm going to pin it in place. You're probably wondering how am I going to sew it then because it's the way I'm pinning it. It's easy. I'll show you. Okay, so put a pin on the shoulder. Now go down and I'm going to go down and get my side seam and my underarm seam matched up. Where to go? There it is. And match them up. Okay, so I have my underarm seam matched up. So I have my shoulder seam and my underarm seam all matched up. 
Now I'm going to want to pin all the way around the armhole. So let me do that and I'll be right back and I'll show you how it looks. So I have it pinned. See, as you can see, it's pinned right into place all the way around the armhole. Now I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch right, not, not this part of the ribbing, right where the sweater and the, and the arm ribbing, this is the ribbing, right where they join together. So right in that ditch, right there. That's where I'm going to sew and then you won't be able to tell that I have a stitch line there. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, and I'm also going to do a close up with my phone because I know how dark this kind of is over here with my laptop. So here is my waistband of my sweater. I'm going to slide the waistband. See, I took the arm off of my sewing machine. So it's just the thin, just the thin part. I'm going to slide the waistband. I'm going to slide the sweater onto the arm and work my way up to the armhole. Okay. So here's the waistband of my sweater. I slid it on to the arm of the sewing machine, but I have my, my needle lined up with that ditch that I just talked about. Put your needle in the down position. Okay. Take your needles out as you go. I'm feeling to make sure I only have one layer of fabric because I don't want to accidentally have like another part of the sweater caught in there. So always feeling and sticking my hand underneath to double check. I can't see it, but I always have my, my sewing machine set to having my needle in the down position. So every time I take my foot off the pedal, my needle is down, holding that fabric so it doesn't move. That's a good habit to get into when you're sewing. Okay, so this is what we've got so far. Is... Built-in sleeves inside the sweater so far. It's gonna look so cute. I'm gonna actually get some use out of this thing finally. Next, I already did the except the rolled little double or the single rolled hem with a zigzag stitch through it to keep it from fraying. Now I'm gonna repeat the same process. I went ahead and marked my center front with a pin, and that's where I'm gonna start. I went ahead and buttoned it. That's where I'm gonna start the front of my shirt pinning. I'm gonna pin that right underneath. And once again, just like in the armholes, I'm going to be sewing right in this line right here. See this line right there? So I need to make sure that my shirt's up far enough to catch that stitch. So. Okay. And pin it into place. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and attach my side seams to the side seams of, of this sweater. Matching everything up so it looks it looks like you're wearing two layers. Okay, side seam and pin side seam. Now I'm just going to continue. I'm just going to continue pinning all the way around the bottom hem of the shirt, pinning this to this, and I'll be right back. So I went ahead and pinned the bottom of my shirt to the bottom of my sweater. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and just sew all the way around the bottom of my sweater, and I'll be right back. Okay, now with this, you slide the bottom of your sweater onto your arm, sewing from the right side of the fabric, getting everything up and out of the way, all those arms, all the extra fabric, and I'm going to start at a side seam. The okay, first thing I'm going to want to do is put my foot down, just in the down position, there we go, and I'm going to do a fixed stitch. Okay. 
Now, the bottom of this shirt is slightly bigger than the bottom of the sweater because the sweater is elastic, the shirt is not. So I'm going to grab at my other side seam and I'm going to pull slight enough just to pull all the slack out of the fabric. So I'm going to stretch my sweater. I'm stretching the sweater to meet the size of the bottom of the shirt. The reason I'm holding on to the side seam because I want to make sure the side seam stays, that the side seam and the, the two side seams meet. I want to keep it that way. So I'm, that's where I'm grabbing there and I'm just pulling slight. It's just enough to take the slack out of the, the shirt. Okay. I'm going to make sure my center fronts stay together. Again, just slightly. I only have a few pins in this, so I'm not like pulling on any too many pins. And I wanted pins in there to make sure that my fabric stayed up above the ribbing, so I, high enough so I was sewing through both fabrics. So I am done, and there is my layered sweater vest, which is no longer a sweater vest. I'll go ahead and try this on and take pictures for you, and so you can see how it really looks, how it looks on. Okay, well here it is. I know it doesn't go with my camouflage pants, <laughs> but look at nice and smooth. You don't see all the layering underneath. If I would have had this shirt underneath this, you would have seen seen the button line and you would have seen excess fabric all over. But this is like, it's like putting on Spanx, taking, you know, taking that extra fabric out from the inside. But look it, you don't see any of the extra fabric. Looks like I have a shirt hanging out from underneath my sleeves. And I, I also, this shirt's not that long. And I also gave it a chance to cover my butt. So I made this shirt longer. Um, but look at, and then no collar. Before, you'd be able to see the collar through here um, because that's where the collar. I mean, how perfect is this? Doesn't it look like, doesn't it look like I'm wearing layers? Look at, oh. it looks like I've got layers on. Okay, well, there it is. So I really hope that you try this project. Like I said, this project is really easy for the beginning sewer. Um, because you don't see any of your sewing work. It's all invisible. So if you, if you do, um, if you do in a quick hurry way or you, you had some sewing mistakes where you got some fabric caught in there or whatever, guess what? No one's going to see it. It's on the inside of the sweater. So this is definitely a great project for those of you who are beginner sewers and you want to take on that, um, refashioning for the first time. Why not take out one of your sweaters and give it a layered look? Ah. I might have to wear this tomorrow. I mean, look at this. It looks like I have two shirts on. Very, very easy and also very slenderizing. It takes out all that extra fabric. Okay, this is Amy with Fashion Toppings with another refashion. Until next time, I hope you have a great day.